Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on the channel and I'm going to be gone for the next week. I'm going to be on vacation in Los Angeles and so I wanted to still get a video out for you guys since I won't be able to review Super Pets, unfortunately so tragic. So instead I'm going to give you guys 10 different reviews for 10 movies that came out earlier this year that I either really loved or was really disappointed in. This is a large range of different movies all the way from X that came out earlier this year all the way to The Gray Man which was just released on Netflix last week. But before I get into that, I do want to mention one movie that I have seen that has technically not come out yet, and that is called Breaking, starring John Boyega. You guys probably just saw the trailer uh, about last week is when it came out, and this is a movie that I saw at Sundance that I never got around to making a review for, and can I just tell you guys, this movie is incredible, and I really, really hope that John Boyega gets some awards consideration when it comes to the Oscars next year, or just really any awards at all. And same thing with Michael K. Williams in his posthumous role, he was just phenomenal in this movie, and it was just such a heartbreaking and moving and just thrilling movie that was just based on such an incredible true story that had a lot of tragic moments a lot of you know heartbreaking moments in it and it is just a movie that I highly recommend I'll probably do a full review when it is released in theaters later this year but I do want to mention that I did see that and that I love it and that I want all you guys to go see it when it comes out so let's get into these 10 movies. I'm going to go in release date order, so it's not in any particular order in terms of worst to best. So we're going to start off with X, which was the A24 movie that came out earlier at the beginning of the first quarter of the year. And this was a movie that I really, really did love. And I don't know why I didn't do a, re a review for it, because I saw its opening night. I really, really enjoyed the movie and had so many great meanings behind it so many great in-depth themes about you know aging about you know losing beauty and the loss of the beauty and how that affects you when you're older and you know these younger people that can experience all these things that you can you will end up losing as you grow older and it had a lot of great themes in it and it was a fun slasher movie which was the most important part and it had all the things you want it had gore had nudity had all the fun elements that you want in a, a schlocky, you know, 80s type horror movie in the modern day. And this has been a year of, you know, the comeback of slashers. We had Scream, then we had this, and we have Bodies, Bodies, Bodies coming out next week. And a lot of just great slashers have been coming out, and this was definitely one of the better ones. The next movie I want to talk about is Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which I didn't see when it was out in theaters. I waited till it was released on Paramount Plus, so it is now streaming. And this was a movie where I really did enjoy the first one. I thought it was a lot of fun. It wasn't a great movie by any means, but Jim Carrey carried that movie and had such great levity in it that just made the whole movie have this infectious type of enjoyment in it. And I do think the second movie, the first half of it, really did struggle to reach those points. There's a lot of great moments with Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails, and how they all meet, and how the, the conflict was at first with Knuckles, and some really cool stuff with Robotnik at the beginning of the movie, seeing Jim Carrey do his normal Jim Carrey thing. But the movie didn't have as much Jim Carrey as I wanted to, so I didn't have that consistent fun tone with him in the movie. However, the last half of this movie was miles better than anything in the first half of this movie, and anything in the first movie. The second half was full Sonic entertainment and fun, and although I never played the game, you could tell that the nostalgia and the amount of care that the filmmakers had for this character and for the you know things in these games that they put in the last act of this movie, which is so fun. And that's what I want to see from a Sonic 3. And I, you know, even if this was Jim Carrey's last movie, he went out on a fun note, so that at least there's that. But I guess I don't really need Robotnik to come back for the third movie. They kind of set it in a point where, you know, you think he died, but maybe he could have survived, maybe he can come back. But if Jim Carrey doesn't come back and you focus just on Tails, Knuckles and Sonic and that trio and how great it was to see, you know, Sonic go all out at the end and have them all team up against the Robotnik giant, you know, robot mech thing. There was a lot of really fun stuff in the ending of this movie. So I hope that they go in that direction and just have more fun with it when they do a sequel to this instead of, you know, being so bogged down by the wedding stuff in this movie or, you know, just having just so much things with plot that didn't really matter because the ending, the fun stuff at the end is what you wanted the movie to be. And so it was a fun movie, but it wasn't, it was about as good as the first one for me, but the ending was really great. The next movie I want to talk about is another Sundance movie, which actually has been released. It is now on VOD, so you can rent this or buy it on iTunes or any other, you know, place where you buy VOD movies. And this is On the Count of Three. And this is a movie like, oh my God, I cannot wait for all you guys to go see this movie because it is definitely one of the best ones. If you don't know what this movie is about, essentially it's about two guys who they are feeling very depressed. They are at the peak of their depression and they make an agreement to take each other's lives. On the count of three, they're going to fire their guns. But before they do that, they're going to have one day to kind of tie up loose ends before their suicide pact by the end of their, their day, essentially. And this is a movie that, I will warn you, is very, very difficult to watch at times. The subject matter is very heavy, but 
Jared Michael, who is the star and also director of this movie, handles it in such a perfect way because it is heart-wrenching to watch these characters go through all this anguish in their life, all this, you know, depression that they're, you know, feeling the weight on their shoulders of and have their final days, their final moments of them trying to experience all the things that they want to do before they die. And it's just, it is so comedic at times. It's also very heartbreaking and very hard to watch at times, but it is a journey throughout this movie that you just are following these two leads that play off of each other so well. And so although this movie is not for the faint of heart, and I don't think this movie is for everybody, if what I just said for the premise of this movie sounds, you know, entertaining to you, it really is. Like I said, the dark comedy in this movie is so so good. I loved watching this movie, every second of it, and the ending was just perfect. So definitely go check out On the Count of Three on VOD. Next up is a Disney Plus streaming movie that I kind of wish was in theaters. It is Chippendale Rescue Rangers, and I never watched the Chippendale Rescue Rangers show back in the 90s or 80s, whenever the show was on air, and this weird revival that they did with Andy Samberg and Akiva Schaefer with John Mulaney voicing another character in this movie, it was just so entertaining to watch their type of humor put in this weird like you know kids movie meta amalgamation that just turned into something that was more akin to Wreck-It Ralph and Ready Player One than anything else. It was so meta, so entertaining, and had a lot of Jessica Rabbit type of things in this movie as well. This movie was very well made. The, the filmmaking in general was very entertaining, and the animation mixed with the live action mixed with the CGI was really cool and inventive, and the jokes in this movie were so spot on. If you like meta jokes that are not only Disney, because yes, this is a Disney movie, but they poke fun at so many different things, including a movie that I might have mentioned a sequel to earlier in this video. And so this movie has some of the best jokes all year. It is so entertaining and it's one of the most rewatchable movies of the year so far. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites of the year, but in terms of movies that, you know, I really, really enjoyed watching and that I would definitely recommend to you guys to watch just on a free night when you're bored and you want to have just an entertaining, fun movie to watch, this is definitely one of those movies. Next up is a movie streaming on Amazon Prime called Emergency, directed by Carrie Williams, who actually directed a movie that I saw at Sundance last year. I have a review up for it. It's called Our Hashtag J is a Romeo and Juliet in the Modern Age with Social Media, and it's like a found footage. Like all the movie was through a phone, technically, so I guess it's technically found footage. But it was it was an interesting take on the Romeo and Juliet story where I really liked the ending, but overall the movie was fine. And so Emergency came around, and I heard the premise of this movie, which was a couple black students in a college, you know, they are ready to party out on their final year of college but then when they go back to their apartment their little you know on-campus home they find this white girl passed out drunk on the floor of their apartment and one of them wants to call the police and the other is too afraid to call the police because well it's two black men standing over a white girl that's passed out and he is utterly terrified and you can imagine just the the chaos that ensues from this premise it is an another very darkly comedic movie the comedy in this movie is so so good this is genuinely one of my favorite movies of the entire year underneath the batman and everything everywhere all at once it was such a great movie that blended the comedy with the drama so well with the social commentary and it just carrie williams made such a phenomenal movie and i think this i think our hashtag j was possibly his first movie and this is his second but what a career so far you know have a weird type of experimental movie with Romeo and Julia taking a classic story bringing it to the modern age and now in a really good original entertaining funny dark social comedic movie it was so so good RJ Kyler and Donald Ellis Watkins are phenomenal in this movie and can I tell you the Kumle character is so good that actor plays this role so well there are so many heartbreaking scenes where they just have especially at the end of the movie they have a heart to heart at the end of this movie that brought me to utter tears. That is such a strong written friendship that these two characters have. You feel like they have really been friends forever and just the, the journey that they go through as characters and as people in this movie is utterly just incredible. Next up is another Sundance movie that, you know, I had the opportunity of buying a ticket for, but I just couldn't spend any more money because I just bought so many tickets for a lot of other movies. And that was Watcher starring Micah Monroe that was released in theaters about last month. And this movie is so thrilling. It has a rear window type of paranoid thriller type of style to it that was very entertaining and Michael Monroe like I said was an incredible force in this movie you rooted for her throughout the entire thing and you felt her paranoia you were on the edge of your seats as she was in this movie being as paranoid at the person across the street looking at her from the window it was creepy it was suspenseful and it was just a great thriller that you can put on at night and be creeped out by it wasn't necessarily like a, a giant horror movie where there's jump scares every second but no it was a paranoid thriller that just 
really, really does grab you from the very beginning with a strong lead performance and a great ending that I would definitely recommend to anybody who loves this type of thriller. Next up is probably one of the most disappointing movies of the year so far, and I don't know why I didn't do a review for this one. This is Jurassic World Dominion, one of the biggest movies of the year, one of the most anticipated movies of the year, and a, a capping of a new trilogy of Jurassic Park movies that just kind of went out on such a weak note. And I, I famously hate Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I do not like that movie whatsoever. I think the first half has its merits, and it's definitely a watchable movie, kind of. The last half is barely watchable, but the first half is fun enough. And this movie at least had a consistent you know, tone, I guess, throughout. It was what it was, and it didn't quite live up to the promise that Fallen Kingdom left off at the end of the of that movie with saying that the dinosaurs are all out in the real world but what I did enjoy about this movie was surprisingly the the characters coming together in the end I didn't think I would you know I just kind of had that you know dumb little movie fan brain in my head that was like wow it's cool to see the cast of the Jurassic World movies meet the original cast from the Jurassic Park movies it was fun was there some really bad editing choices sure was there a lot of weird story choices sure did I really like the clone girl actually kind of a lot more in this movie than I did the last one. So it was definitely better than Fallen Kingdom, but I would be very hard pressed to say that this is a good movie. It is a, a, a much more watchable movie that has some fun, entertaining action sequences. The street chase with the motorcycles and the raptors was really, really entertaining. But for the most part, this movie was just kind of forgettable. Next up is probably one of my favorite comedies of the year so far, and that is Cha Cha Real Smooth, starring Dakota Johnson and Cooper Rafe, directed by Cooper Rafe, actually. And I really like his two movies, First off was Shit House, and now was Cha Cha Real Smooth. Two really great movies if you watch them back to back. The tone of it and the comedy are just kind of in sync with each other, and I think Cooper Rafe has a very promising future as a writer-director in you know this field. And I really like his movies and his comedy, especially. If you don't like his comedy, if you watch if you watch Shit House or if you've seen Cha Cha Real Smooth, then you probably won't like the other one. But for me, who really like both of these movies. I just, I just found them very endearing. Cha Cha Real Smooth was very funny and very entertaining and also very sweet. It was very just heartwarming. I think it won the Audience Award at Sundance and this was another movie that was completely sold out at the Sundance Film Festival and it was the kind of the coda of this year because everybody knew it was going to win the Audience Award and it did. And so this was a movie that is now streaming on Apple TV Plus that I finally got to watch that I just really really did enjoy and it brought me to tears at the end of the movie the ending is actually really heartbreaking and moving and the character journey that cooper rafe's character goes through throughout this movie is very relatable and very endearing and you just feel for the guy he is so good in roles like this and his role in shithouse he's just a phenomenal you know beginning filmmaker and he's very young too the fact that he's as young as he is and has made two great movies that have just been fairly successful in the festival runs and especially to audiences who have seen them definitely go take a look at this movie next up is the bohemian rhapsody of the year and that is elvis and when i say that i mean it's yet another biopic of a music you know a, a grand musical artist that is iconic at this point that is just kind of okay this movie had a style that was just a two hour and 47 minute music video that was exhausting for the first half but kind of settled down a little bit in the back half where you actually get to know Elvis a little bit and you get to know his personality and his character flaws and really see him as who he was but for the most part this movie is yet another montage through somebody's life and I, I prefer the biopics that take its time to really dive into who the character was not to the people who really enjoyed this person as they were to the public eye but the movies that kind of dive into who they were behind closed doors and this movie got a little bit into that. I think Rocket Man really did that well, and I think Spencer is one of my favorite biopics in recent years that really did showcase, you know, somebody, a public figure, in a manner that we've never seen them before. But if you want to see a movie that shows the spectacle and the personality that Elvis was to the public, this movie will be fun to you. It will be, you know, a fun rock and roll, exciting, the music is great, and the style is very non-stop. Tom Hanks is very questionable in this movie, but for the most part, I did enjoy watching this movie, and I do think it sits in that spot for Bohemian Rhapsody where it's just fine with a lead performance that is truly incredible. And last but not least is the brand new Russo Brothers action thriller on Netflix called The Gray Man starring Ana de Armas, Ryan Gosling, and Chris Evans. And this is a movie that is just like it's it's not great it's not good honestly it's kind of it's kind of bad it's not the worst thing i've ever seen it's definitely watchable i think if you're a general audience member who loves action movies you'll find plenty of in this movie to just be entertained by because it has that kind of facade where it's like oh wow all this really great stuff is happening and it's very entertaining but the problem with this movie is 
that none of the action is necessarily perfectly original or new, something that you haven't seen before. The hand-to-hand -hand combat fights are definitely better than the actual big giant chase scenes with car chases and Ryan Gosling running on top of a runaway train that crashes into a building that is very Fast and Furious like that that's not where this movie excels this movie excels in the rivalry between Chris Evans and Ryan Gosling and that fight at the end is really where this movie does kind of succeed more than it fails but this movie in general with the story and the script is just simply bad i was laughing at a lot of points of this movie and none of which were the jokes the story in general at by the end of it feels very unfinished a lot of arcs are never gone back to it's never really wrapped up by the end of the movie which is disappointing because i was interested in some of the setup of this movie but if you want to watch a dumb fun action movie this is on netflix and it's definitely worth you know watching on netflix because it is just a streaming platform if this was in theaters maybe i would probably feel the same about the movie itself but maybe I think more people would be upset about purchasing the movie for, you know, $20 for a ticket and then all the concession prices. So I think this movie is a fine enough watch. I just don't think it's necessarily that great. And that will be 10 movies that I miss reviewing throughout the year. I will definitely be doing more of these as the year goes on. I've been trying to watch one movie every single day that I haven't seen before. So I've been seeing a lot of different releases just in general. So if you want to keep up with all the things that I'm watching on a day to day basis, definitely go follow my Letterboxd. It is in the description and it is you know in the card at the end so definitely go check all those things out if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you guys subscribe and leave a like on this video and comment down below any of your thoughts on any of the movies that i talked about in this video so thanks everybody for watching and i hope to see you all in my next one mm -hmm.